Um, when you're not speaking, please mute yourself. Um, if you get booted off the call, uh, there is a number you can call. Um, it should be, do you have a copy of it? Does everyone have the number? Yeah. Okay, so when you get booted, we'll wait for you for a little while. If you don't come back, we still have quorum. We will continue with the meeting. Um, are there any questions before before we start? Seeing that, I will I will take the attendance, please. Uh, Councillor Wheat, present. Councillor McAlpine, present. Councillor Laferriere, present. <clears throat> Councillor House, present. Councillor Bell, present. Councillor Pierce. Present. Councillor Chambers. Councillor Chambers. Right here, I'm here. Councillor Miller. Present. Councillor Coleman. Here. Councillor Gatward. Present. We're all here. Uh, second thing on the agenda, please, is the approval of the agenda. Um, noting that we've taken the budget of the BIA off the agenda tonight. And also we have a request from Jay Hitchon to speak as a delegation. Um, it's up to council whether you want to let him speak tonight or whether um, we don't. Um, what do you want to do, Councilor Chambers? I'll move that uh, the delegation of uh, Jay Hitchon be allowed. Looking for a seconder, Councilor I'll Miller. Second it. Okay, are there any, op any opposition? We'll call the vote, all those in favor. Okay, Mr. Hitchon will be added then as the last delegation, and everyone knows that the, the budget for the BIA is taken off the agenda. With that being said, Councillor McAlpine. Okay, moved by myself and second by Council of Ferry that the County of Brant County agenda and addendum for February 23rd be approved, and that the request to appear as a delegation from Jay Hitchin regarding item 10 to 49. 449-453 Mount Pleasant Road be approved to be heard as the last delegation matter. Thank you. Everyone's clear on what they're voting on. All those in favor? Thank you. Anyone opposed? Seeing none. <coughs> uh, declaration of pecuniary interest. Does anyone have anything that Councillor Gatward? What is it? Do you want to declare it now, please? Councilor Gatward? You have to unmute, John. Councilor Get. yep. What's your... Conflict? I have a conflict on 4.4. 4.4, thank, thank you. Delegations. First right. one is um, Mark. Yeah, just on the uh, uh, on the condo piece, um, we may not have a conflict if it's just sending to report, but Councillor Bell and I may have one if we do anything else. <laughs> so just want to make people aware of that. All right. If it's just a re report to Council, we're fine. But if not, we'd have to ask the Integrity Commissioner before we could proceed. Thank you. Okay, moving on to number four. One, that's uh, uh, Russell Press. Good evening and, uh, and, and thank you, Your Worship. Annually, the Economic Development Council of Ontario presents <clears throat> an award to an elected official that has made significant impact on their peers, the industry of economic development, their community and overall influence on economic development. And normally uh, we're presenting these awards at a conference um, and, and it's quite an affair, but unfortunately, uh, or fortunately for me, um, we're doing it this way. And I have the pleasure to be able to present the award on behalf of Edco to His Worship Mayor, uh, Mayor Bailey. So uh, I wanted to uh, come on and, and officially present the award. Um, you have the award. We, we've already I do. I do. presented it. Yeah. And um, I, I just before, uh, just, just before we, uh, you, you uh, speak to it. Um, I just wanted to, of course, in the uh, in the vein that I do, um, always trying to promote the County of Brant, that award and the dozens of other ones um, that go throughout Ontario um, were made right here in the County of Brant um, for the last two years, actually, by LCHA Design Company. 
beautiful award uh, just out by Mount Pleasant there. And um, they don't normally have the awards go um, just, just, it's usually just one year of, of the award maker, but they had it go twice this year. So uh, congratulations to the County of Brant for that as well. Thank you. Well, thank, thank you, Russell. Um, it is, it is a, a pleasure to receive the award. I, I do have the award with me here and it does light up. It, it, it shuts off and lights up, which is kind of cool. And it's a piece of cherry wood that has come from the county, which is very nice too. And although the award does have my name on it, it's, it's obviously it belongs to the entire county of Brant and its staff. Uh, Russell, your, your department, your people are wonderful and uh, they make me look good. They put, they put forward amazing events and amazing programming. And, uh, and so thank you for, for always elevating your council and your mayor, you, you do a good job. And uh, I am very happy to, to have the award and to the council too. Thank you for supporting most things that come across council for the betterment of the County of Brant. I think it's a, a big deal for us to have this brought home this year. So uh, I, have, I have one here at the house and, and they've given me one for the council chamber. So there are two awards. So. Thank you very much. Councilor Chambers. Uh, Mr. Mr. Mayor, I wondered if you could allow a, a resolution to be placed at this time. It's moved by myself and seconded by Councilor Bell that the County of Brant congratulate Mayor Bailey on being the recipient of the Economic Developers Council of Ontario Award for Community Influencer of the Year. I'm gonna call a very serious vote. All those in favor? <laughs> Opposed, don't wanna hear about it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Robert. Thank you, Russell. Four two. Uh, we have we have a we have a delegation. Mr. Falco, is he here? Yes. How are you? Good evening. How are you? Good evening, Mayor. What are you going to talk to us about? Uh, okay. Uh, to you, the mayor and members of council. I, Pietro Falco at 2 Willowdale Street, am asking for my sea can slash shipping container. It's an eight by eight by 20 to be grandfathered in as it has been here for 12 or 13 years with no problems to the neighborhood. And so the bylaw officer showed up approximately six weeks ago to inform me that there was a complaint filed by an unknown individual saying that I was out of compliance. He told me that I would have to change the zoning, which would cost me $3,000 if I get it rezoned, which brings me also to asking for a waiver, if needed, of the cost of the rezoning, $3,000, because it's difficult for me to pay for this rezoning charge as I am on CPP disability due to cancer, which I was forced to retire. And I've also sent some pictures and a diagram on where it is located on my property and all that kind of stuff. So I think you guys have that. Uh, I did yes, say we, we do. We do have that in our package. Oh. All right, um, that's all I have to say, I guess. <laughs> well, let, let, let's see if council has any questions for you. Are there any questions to the delegation? Council, Councilor House, first, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Through you to Mr. Falco. Uh, just two quick questions. Um, number one is the, would it be accurate to say that you're using the sea can for storage? Yeah, it, I've, I've uh, put it like a, it's my shed type of thing. So I have all my Christmas stuff and like, you know, yeah, sure. so, yeah, and it, has, okay. it also has a roll up door in the front. So it doesn't have, it doesn't even look like a shipping container. You know what I mean? Like, Right. Okay. Thank you. And and I guess the second question is, is uh, it when I looked when I looked up your location uh, uh, online and and I, I presumably your address was part of the city of Brantford a few years ago. Um, sure. I've been here seventeen years now. So. Okay. And has it been the county of Brant that it, this wasn't part of any boundary? No. Okay. No. Okay. That's actually the reason why I moved out here because it was county, it wasn't city. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you. No problem. Any other questions to the delegation? Councillor Miller. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, through you to Mr. Falco. Mr. Falco, that uh, shipping container, um, 
Is it even visible from uh, the street, or do you have to? Is it visible oh. from Highway 53 only? No, oh, just like if you see the picture, the only one you can see is the one from the uh, where the storage place is there. So coming yeah. uh, from Burford, you only see yeah. like two feet of the top of it at the back. But other than that, my fence is eight feet high, so you can't. I don't even know how this guy even saw it. Right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I I had the same thoughts, but I just I wanted to ask and check. So thank you very much for your yeah. answer. Councillor Gatwood, you're next, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, through you to Mr. Falco. Um, so you've been there for a number of years already. All right. Did the bylaw enforcement officer tell you when the bylaw was passed prohibiting? those from your property without a zoning change like recent what mean? year or, what or year no my question is what year did he tell you that bylaw was passed prohibiting um th those on your property just when he showed up uh six weeks ago but you're not sure what year um we passed that bylaw yeah no I, yeah i didn't i don't know that no Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Falco. You're welcome. Any other questions? Uh, seeing none, I just will comment that I don't like when complaints come from people that don't uh, say who they are. It, uh, it, it's not a warm and fuzzy feeling moving forward with complaints where, where people don't attach a name to them. Um, anyway, um, any, there's no other questions, no other concerns? Uh, seeing none, I'll ask Councillor Coleman what he wants to do with the delegation. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move by myself and seconded by, by Councillor Wheat that the request for grandfathering of a shipping container at 2 Willowdale Street be referred to staff for a report. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so that's what's going to happen then. We're going to put this to the staff and you'll hear back from, from us uh, sooner than later. Okay. Well, th thank you for taking the time to come and speak to us tonight. No, thank you very much for listening, and hopefully, uh, I try to do everything to comply with everything that goes on around here. So, well, well, thank you. We appreciate that. Yes, thank you very much, everybody okay. and uh, mayor. Okay, um, we have we have it on the floor. It's been seconded. All those in favor to refer to staff. Refer to staff. Thank you. Any opposed? No. Great Condominium Corporation Association. Heather, do we have someone on here for that? Yes, Mr. John Gilson is on the line. Evening, Mr. Gilson. Hello, good evening. Am I doing the presentation? I believe you are. Yes. Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor and uh, councillors. My name is John Gilson. And I am here on behalf of the Brant Condominium Corporations Association, or also known as the BCCA, representing all the condominiums that is in, um, in Brantford and uh, also Brant County. And uh, with the explosive growth of condominiums in Brantford and Brant County, we now have quite a few members, which continues to increase as more condominium developments are being completed. We are there as an organization to try to help and to educate owners and boards on the complexities of condo living and to help where we can to make things a little easier and less complicated uh, to the owners and boards. And uh, that's one part of our, our, our work. So if you come across anyone who, has, who needs a little help or guidance, you're certainly welcome to um, refer them to us. And uh, we have a website that they, uh, where the contact information is located. And we also advocate on behalf of the owners and boards. And I'm here this evening in that capacity as advocating for, for condominiums. And when I say condominiums, I'm referring to a condo complex, like the, uh, all the units. I'm going to just present three examples of services that are currently the responsibility of condo owners. In Brantford, these issues are completely the responsibility of the city of Brantford. And sort of we are asking for the same treatment. And these three issues encompass fire hydrants, garbage and recycling pickup, and storm scepter management. 
Now you have the presentation in your possession as part of the agenda and uh, for this meeting, so I will not read it, but instead just highlight some points. And it shouldn't take me any more than five or six minutes for that. Fire hydrants first. In the county, condominiums are responsible to have their fire hydrants checked annually. Our condominium, where I live here in Paris, was built in 2013. However, it was four years before we even knew we had to have the fire hydrant checked annually. No one told us. Maybe the manager should have looked after this, but it didn't happen. Another BCCA board member confessed that they have not had their two hydrants checked in eight years. So we also learned in another case that the hydrant hadn't been checked in 18 years when we were talking to the people that came around to check them. There were also two cases in which the hydrant wasn't working when it was finally checked. Uh, it shouldn't be like that. This is a fire safety concern. It is not that condominiums are doing this deliberately. They just are not aware that they need to check hydrants annually. And often when you get new board members and then sometimes you get wholesale new boards, uh, information is not passed along and then the problem starts up all over again. So Brantford City Council, they hire people to go around and check the hydrants all over the city and you like to do the same thing here in the county. So it is not difficult to include the hydrants of corporations in that mix while they're doing it. So when the county is out checking the one on the boulevard beside us here on Cedar Street, they can at that time quickly come in and check our hydrant and the one in the complex across the street from us. Uh, this would not be, a, we're not talking about a major cost here uh, to the county, but we're talking more of a safety issue here. When we get our one fire hydrant checked, it takes about 10 minutes, and then we're charged over $200, including taxes. That amount seems a little high for 10 minutes of work, but, uh, but and they were not even the highest quote. So this, this, so this is most, what I feel is most important is that not checking fire hydrants places lives at risk. So you can imagine the fire department responding to a fire, hooking up to a hydrant, turning on the water, and finding there is no water. A valuable time can be wasted. It's not good. So in Brantford, condominiums are not automatically placed on the list. You have to request it to be placed on the list so that they know where the uh, hydrants are located and so on. But when you're on, when you do this and, and you are then placed on the list to have your hydrant checked. So that's the one item. And the second one is on garbage and recycling pickup. The condominium complex that I live in here has 26 units and there's two other complexes here in Cedar Street and each one is 20 or one is 26, the other one's 25 units. Um, taking all of our garbage and recycling to the main street like to Cedar Street may be an option, but for, it, for us it's not practical. We did this when we first became a complex and we would end up with a huge pile of bags plus a pile of blue bins. And it was a mess trying to put all that in a relatively small area. I believe the county is willing to pick up our garbage and recycling at the end of our driveways, but subject to conditions. And if a condominium cannot satisfy any of those conditions, our waste will not be picked up or possibly only part of the complex will be able to have the garbage and recycling picked up. We feel that if, um, you can't pick up the waste and the recycling, then there should be say a rebate or a small reimbursement. In Brantford, the condominium pays the waste pickup company and then submits, uh, if that's the case, that the condominium will pay the waste pickup company and then submit the bill for reimbursement. Um, if they're willing to, if the city is willing to come in and, and pick up the garbage and you don't want them to, well then that's your, your problem, that'll be your cost. But it costs us now $4,000 a year to have our garbage and recycling picked up for, uh, for 2021, a cost that Brantford condominiums do not have to pay. So this is an inequality or an inequity between the county and the city uh, in the way that recycling and garbage are being handled. So we, we simply ask that you take another look at this to see how to make this more equitable. And finally, the third area of concern is storm scepter cleanout. The city of Brantford also now inspects and cleans out the storm scepters for condominiums. That is, they have taken over storm scepter management. Storm sewers, 
we're, we're not talking about storm sewers, but a storm scepter. Storm sewers are basically a straight pipe running underground to catch the runoff. A storm scepter is more like the trap located under your kitchen and bathroom sinks. Thus, a storm scepter goes down fairly deep into the ground and catches any heavy sediments or oils in the scepter. And then the water flows over top and out to the county street. In our case, it will go out to Rest Acres Road. And while we have several storm sewers, we have one storm scepter in our complex. And that is what this, uh, this uh, is all about, is the one storm scepter that most complexes have, or some, I don't know if any have two even. Um, but here is something that I, we found was interesting. Our quote to have our storm scepter cleaned out in 2017 uh, was just over $2,900, including taxes, by a company I have called Company A, who seems to have the monopoly on storm scepter cleanouts. Because when I did a Google search for these companies, that one came up in many different searches. Um, we felt this was a bit of a high amount for one storm scepter cleanup, which takes about an hour. So we found another company, Company B, that did it for $2,100 instead of $2,900. So that was a savings of about $800, which we felt was a little bit more reasonable. And then, so two years later, because we have to do this every two years, um, we went back to company B who then told us that they could not do the job anymore because they were now getting a lot of their business from company A. So after trying for nearly a year to find another company, we ended up hiring company A for, for almost $4,000, 3,800 to be exact. And what did they do? They sent in company B to do the job. That is a significant increase over the previous two years. So now it seems that we are paying two companies to do the job, company A and company B. And we feel that's collusion, you know, but we can't do anything about it other than we feel that's uh, that is collusion. Um, the storm scepter is there to prevent the storm sewers in the street from plugging up. And that is a good reason why the county should move into managing that because too many condominiums are not getting their storm scepters cleaned out as often as they should. And one com complex says, oh, they don't even remember they're getting cleaned out. So well, and that could be a problem for both the condominium and the county. So really in conclusion here, uh, we're doing our best to try to keep our costs down. So when we have to pay $8,000 in, in a year that other condominiums do not have to pay. That's a significant cost per month for our condo owners. Condo units are taxed at the same mill rate as conventional houses on streets. Included in their taxes are items such as fire hydrant checks, garbage and blue box pickup and storm scepter maintenance. And that is condo owners are paying twice, once to the county as part of the taxes, and then a second time to private contractors. So we're just asking that the county provide the service for which condos are also paying for in their taxes to address this inequity. So I just wanna say thank you very much for listening and thank you very much, Mr. Mayor and councilors for your time. Thank you, Mr. Gilson. Uh, questions, Councillor LaFerrier first, please. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor, through you. I, I, I happen to live in a condo and I lived in a condo previous to the one I live in now and I've only ever lived in the county in condos. But um, that, that said, um, I want to ask you a question about the the Brantford piece. My understanding, I spoke to a counselor before this meeting from Brantford to ask them about this because my, my mother happens to live in a condo in Brantford. And um, I, I think you may not be totally correct on the garbage collection, recycling collection for the city. My understanding is they pay taxes. And if the condo in the city of Brantford uses their own service, they get a rebate that they can apply for. That's not quite the same as, as paying for it Um that piece there. And, and, and I have to say, as somebody who lives in a condo, uh, having a private service sometimes has advantages. Uh, we don't get the same outages. We don't have the same limits and, and things like that as well. So you kind of do get what you pay for. Um, were you aware of that Brantford piece? And I have another question afterwards, if that's okay. Well, I, what I was aware of is that, because uh, I've got, we've got people, most of the people actually on the BCCA are from the city of Brantford. And they're the ones that said that at the end of the month, they submit their invoices to the city for uh, reimbursement. So that's, that's what I was going by. 
Right. So it's a bit more of a choice than it is a, a, a blanket yeah. rule for all kind of but if, if yeah, yeah, like they they won't pay if they won't pay if you if they'll come in and do it and you don't want them to do it. You know, that's not it's so it's when they can't come in to do it, that's when you can submit your invoice. Yeah, we'll, we'll have to clarify that with staff. But the other piece is in, in our yeah. current package today, uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, for the speaker, it says here that uh, we have a we have a, a motion going through or something that has to be signed in that talks about the declaration, including advisories to condominium corporations, that they're solely responsible for private stormwater systems, uh, snow removal, garbage, recycling collection within the plan of condominium at their expense and will not be the responsibility of the county in perpetuity, that means forever, if the owner or the condo corporation is desirous of obtaining county garbage and recycling pickup services, it's to be negotiated following the full build out of the subject lands to the sole satisfaction of the county of Brant. So I know, you know, when I, when I purchased both of my condos in Paris, I was told, you know, that you have a dumpster at the one, you'll have our own pickup. Are you finding that, that people are moving into the condos and not aware that this is a forever or potentially forever thing that, you know, garbage and recycling is at their expense? And that's part of why we it's sort of the deal that's made for growth is that they will be a little more self-sufficient because of the density and the rest of it, which lowers all of our taxes. So while it's true, the mill rate is the same for everybody. It's generally lower than some surrounding municipalities because of actions like this. Is that are you finding people are aware of that when they move into condos or not? Because maybe there's no, an education. I piece. think uh, a lot of them are just uh, some of the, all, all they get when they move into a condo or if they do it properly, they ask for a status certificate. And the status certificate is supposed to give information about the condo living and about the condominium that they're moving into. Um, but we are under, uh, we, we can't. I know that we, our complex is in the shape of the, the letter T. So when you drive on Cedar Street into our complex, you go to the end of the street and you can turn right or left. And on the other side of the T, there's six units that back onto Rest Acres Road. And they will not pick up the garbage from those six units. And it has to do with insurance or something like that. And so either we pile that up in some spot where they can come in and get it, or we look after ourselves. I mean, it's it, there is a convenience thing that they can just go at any time they want to the dumpster at the end of the unit and uh, put it in there. But if they're willing to uh, pay the, the the money for that, then the, I don't think the town should reimburse that. But if we if we really we don't all want to walk to the other end of the complex either, and, and putting in uh, sixty or fifty bags out there and uh, and and all that garbage, but no, generally uh, we find that people moving into a, a complex don't have that information. And so what we've done and what we 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 recommend people do is that the board, as soon as somebody moves in, the board meets with the new owners, sits down and talks about these things and answer any questions that they may have. No, that, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, through, through you, Mr. Mayor, one more thing. I, I through, through you to the, the speaker. Um, I notice when I type in condos, County of Brant or condos, City of Brantford or condos, Pilsenburg or condos, Bur Brampton, I, I, don't, I don't see any municipal websites that have information for potential or current condo owners specifically. I'm wondering if you think, uh, Don, through, through the mayor, um, that maybe a website of, of information for condo owners that's specific to the mun municipality would would make sense uh, having a mini site of some kind because that's something we can ask staff to, to look into yeah yes and um our, our website is is uh basically www.mybcca.ca and if you go to the minutes page for example there you can down look download a uh, 27 page uh like a manual that we've written ourselves and put together to introduce people to condo living and especially to boards uh, how to be transparent and and things like that because a lot of times you hear that no one's knowing what's going on and they don't see any minutes they don't see anything so we advocate that that you know through this manual some some good points in that and, and getting people to uh, read it if they read it they'll have an idea how how maybe to try to run a, a complex because it's it's not easy well, well thank you thank you for your service and thank you for your presentation okay thank you thank you very much i appreciate it thank you. councillor how is your next please oh thank you mr mayor uh quick just a couple quick questions to mr gilson um if we haven't lost him up oh, there he is no uh, Thanks. And, and Mark uh, covered a, some of what I was going to ask about, but the, um, 
it, I appreciate that your group, as you said, is, is part of your purpose is to advocate and to educate. Um, and, and that sounds uh, critical because it sounds to me like there's, there are some communication, some opportunities to improve the communication yeah. to condo owners. Um, and, and so at, at, at towards the end of your uh, presentation and your, your, your write-up that you sent to us, um, you were expressing some concerns about, about costs that, that the, the condominium boards uh, uh, have to take. And I, I guess my specific question is, do the condo owners know going in when they're becoming condo owners, do they know that these costs are, are borne by them? So that's, that's one of my questions. Um, my second question specific to your garbage and recycling point, it, I just wanted you to clarify it. It sound, I think it sounds like you're suggesting um, that the county should, should pick up your garbage and recycling to where the trucks can get to and that, that we should reimburse you for the places where the trucks can't get to. So no, I, I just want to... Yeah, I wouldn't suggest that because that gets that gets too complicated in itself. I, th I think, uh, like in our case, they would come down the main street, but they won't do the back street. Um, that, you know, we can look at it that way too, but the people at the back, uh, they're really in the spot to put those bags unless you take it all the way to the street because they've got other units and, and not living around there. Um, but anything will help like our insurance now the, the insurance costs have gone up really crazy high and a lot of people are now paying twenty thousand dollars a year for insurance to insure a complex and then you've got deductibles of ten thousand or deductibles of twenty thousand and so on even fifty thousand um so we're, we're trying to stay above it there are a lot of condos that are in trouble financially and we are trying to help them too to to get out from under that burden. Um, okay. And All right. Sorry. Uh, sorry, sir. Um, now, I should also say one other thing is that, sir, to answer your question, no, they likely don't know that they likely know they have to pay for certain things, but it's all in their condo fees. And so, what the question they ask is, "What's my condo fee?" And then, what does that cover? Well, you know, like ours would cover the roof and the deck and the street and, and so on. Whereas the one across the street, uh, freehold, they only have to worry about the lawn, cutting the grass and the snow. They're responsible for everything else. So they're responsible for their roof and their deck and any other maintenance on the outside. So they're, it's quite different from one to the other. And that's why it's important to get a hold of that declaration and the bylaws and and uh, the rules that the corporation have because you don't want to go in there and find out that you're not allowed to have a pet which really right. doesn't <laughs> make sense either but you know what i'm saying that you've got to, you, you need to know what you're getting yourself into and, and and the way to do that is through the status certificate and we and we tell the people that okay thank you mr gilson my last question um is it, I, I appreciate that you're shining a spotlight on this fire hydrant inspection issue um, it, that's very alarming to me. Um, and, uh, my very specific question is you reference that a uh, contractor was in to inspect your hydrants. And he said that, uh, he had, re he had, uh, inspected a complex recently that had not been checked in 18 years. Right. My specific, my specific question is, was that in the County of Brant? Do you know that? Uh, that was in the county of Brant. The one that hadn't been checked for eight years was in the city of Brantford. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Uh, Councillor Miller, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, three to Mr. Gilson. Uh, and Mr. Gilson, maybe you know the answer, maybe you don't, but it just, I know what you're saying, that it, it shouldn't cost a lot to check a fire hydrant, but um, they do seem to charge a lot. And, and I think maybe some of it has to do with what you mentioned earlier was the, uh, maybe there's an insurance, a liability insurance involved. And I'm just wondering if the, if it falls on the county, if you would like the county to look after this, um, do you think that's a fair statement then that the county would now be liable for, for that, I guess, if they're checking it? 
Well, uh, I wasn't thinking of liability because if, if, if the county looks after it, we know that our fire, the fire hydrants in, in the entire county, whether it's in a condo or not, in a community or not, uh, if it's checked, we know that there, that's a safety issue that's been addressed. And, uh, and when they come in and I watch them check them at the boulevard there on Cedar Street and they just basically open it up and, and everything is running and pouring out and they close it off and they leave. Uh, so, okay. Everything and, and I'm just wondering liability to... with it, but if, if they find out, if an yeah. owner finds out that they lost their house and their possessions and that because the fire hydrant wasn't working, that's that's a liability. <laughs> okay, fair enough. And I think it might be the same with storm scepters, but I just I just want to get your input on that. And I, I think that might be a better question for staff down the road. So okay, thank you very much. Okay. Are there any other questions to the delegation? Seeing none. Um is there any staff that want to speak to anything that's been that's been said? Any any answers, Mr. Walton? Through you, Mr. Mayor, to um, um, to council. Um, thank. You. I'd like to thank the presenter for his uh, his uh, presentation. Um, there's certainly things that we can agree and disagree on in, in his presentation, but. On the water part of it with the hydrants, uh, I think that there is a role that the county could could play in that. Um, whether it's it's a for fee service or, or or not, it would be a decision of council. But I think that there is a role that we could play there, and there may be a role that we can play in the in the storm scepter one as well. Even though even though it possibly could be on a fee for service where we could have the economy of scale of making the the cost for there's a possibility there, and I'd be glad to bring a report back on both of those. I think that our uh, we have very recently actually looked at the whole issue of garbage collection though and as recently as two years ago considered this this subject once before and uh, there's really no new information here um, that, that's being uh, discussed so um, uh, staff is glad to bring back whatever report council would like to see and as they say there's two issues there where i think that we could uh, um, do something to help our residents on thank you Mr. Walton. yeah I, I would i would suggest that Mr. Walton's right. There's a bit of security in, in the fact that all of our fire hydrants are working and we know that. Um, I, I feel better knowing that. And uh, so what do you want to do with this, Councillor Wheat? It's moved by myself, Mr. Oh. Mayor, and seconded oh. by Councillor Howes right. that the presentation and request from the Brant Condominium Corporation regarding municipal services be refer to staff for a report. All right. Any other questions or concerns? Seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed? So we will we will send this to staff and, and Mr. Walton said he will get back to us with the water and uh, see what we can come up with. Thank you. Thank you for thank taking you. the time to talk to us tonight. Okay, thank you very much. All right, thank you. Moving on to 4.4, please. Lil and Christine. Hello. Hello, ladies. Hi. Is Christine coming? Hi, Mark. Mm -hmm. Hi, Councillor Laferrier. <laughs> How are you? Did we lose Christine? I'm here. Hi. Oh, yeah. I'm on my iPad, so I don't have the full uh, screen option, unfortunately. Okay. Okay. Hi there. Hello. Thank, thank you for having us. Um, would you like me to share now? Yep, please. Okay, perfect. So hi, my name is Christine Dragolovich and I am from Woodview Mental Health and Autism Services. And my co-chair Lil Petrella is from the Canadian Mental Health Association. We are here tonight to talk about what we believe is the best week of the year. So Mental Health Awareness Week is an opportunity for all of us to raise awareness to everyone in our community about mental health and wellness. We do this in many creative ways. Um, it is a week of families and agencies getting together to share, talk, learn, and to celebrate mental wellness. This year, we are celebrating during the week of May 3rd to May 9th. Um, a little bit about our committee is we are comprised of representatives from places like Brant Haldeman Norfolk Catholic District School Board, the Grand Erie District School Board, 
our healthcare partners, a variety of different community agencies, including Six Nations, St. Leonard's, and a number of other community partners, as well as individual members. Each year, we have new members join the committee, which really excites us as we watch the committee expand and reach more people. All of the amazing representatives plan a variety of different events throughout the week, from a kickoff event to a fun fair, an art show, a barbecue and a fishing derby, just to name a few. We're also able to celebrate individual successes of different people by nominations, and each individual presented receives an award and a small token of a congratulatory gift. We have online presence with Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and we circulate a calendar of events both online and with mail outs and placing them in variety of locations within the community. It is really a week of promoting mental wellness, wellness and we absolutely have a ton of fun doing so. And I would love to pass it on to Lil so she can talk a little bit about our funding needs. There you go. So Christine talks about the fun stuff and I'm talking about the nitty gritty funding, what we need to survive for uh, 2021 Mental Health Week. So um, with Mental Health Week, we've been going on for about 18 years and every year, everyone, more agencies wanna join the party. So we're expanding regionally. We're definitely bringing Brant County into the mix as well, uh, really wanting them to get involved in getting events out in Brant County as well. And um, we have more agencies on board this year. So I think in total, we have about 25 agencies. Now what happens is each agency plans an event for Mental Health Week, and there are costs associated with these events. Um, every year, I'm fortunate with my budget in mental health promotion from the Canadian Mental Health Association, through um, in-services I do, trainings, fee-for-service, workshops, et cetera, um, that supplements if we have you know, a, a little bit of a deficit. But this year I have done, um, I have not done that type of work since, since March due to COVID, <clears throat> pardon me. So there is, no, there is no reserve fund right now. And planning is occurring right now. We had our first mental health week meeting February 4th. We would have started right after the holidays in January, but things were locked down again. So planning is starting already. This is funding that we need as expenses are already uh, being incurred. Uh, we can't really wait until May to get some funding and, and start going with what we have in mind. Um, you know, we don't really want to cancel uh, Mental Health Week because there's thing, last year we were very creative and in doing what we could virtually and uh, with physical distancing the best that we could. And we made Mental Health Week a success. We plan to do that again this year. Uh, but again, every year we're growing and expanding our programs, our activities, and our participation. It really is a community-wide event, which encompasses Brant, Brant County, uh, Haldeman, Norfolk, and Six Nations. So, you know, we have really grown from Brant Mental Health Week to regionally. And, uh, well, on one side of the coin, it's wonderful that there's that kind of interest and growth. On the other side of the coin, it comes with added expenses. So that's my little spiel. <laughs> Do you well, have anything else, else you want to say, Christine, before I hand it over to questions? I, I don't. Okay. <laughs> Qu questions. Yes. Councillor Hauser <laughs> first, please. Pardon me? Oh, Councilor Howes has, got a, has a question for you. Thank yes, you, Mr. Mayor. Yes, Councilor Howes. Uh, thank you. Um, just, uh, briefly, um, I, I can't imagine a time in our history, recent history at least, where mental health and wellness is, is could be a higher priority. It's 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 certainly a, a very big concern. So mm -hmm. I, I I certainly appreciate the subject matter. I was wondering if you could speak briefly about um, with an additional $5,000, if you could tell us a, a little bit more specifically about mm -hmm. what, what new events and activities that you're looking at to, to, to serve the needs of this unique year yes. in, in comparison to other times. And, and I'm speaking specifically to our community. Yes, absolutely. So we want to do a lot of lunch and learns this year, right? Because, um, you know, people cannot come to us. So we're doing that 
on a virtual basis and we're doing what we can within physical distancing. We had this plan last year. Uh, we really wanted to do a, do educational type of thing. Um, twenty twenty one. That's even we drive that even more home, right? Because people are really their mental health is really suffering. Uh, so we want to do a lot of lunch and learns, which you know will really need us to step up virtually. Um, I'm on my little iPad now. <laughs> So, um, you know, definitely we want to reach people as much as we can. So to have the virtual capacity to deliver these lunch and learns at different agencies says they would like to participate with it. That's an added expense. Another expense is uh, we also want to be like team mental health week. So um, we want to get uh, T-shirts with mental health week on them. We want to get masks. And um, if the schools remain open and if organizations are, are still working remotely or or if they're, you know, doing half and half like I am, we want them to wear these t-shirts and these masks during mental health week. That's another expense. And also as we uh, expand uh, regionally, we're also going to have to do advertising and promotion within these additional um, regions. And they're quite expensive. <laughs> You're looking at a page ad, almost a thousand dollars. So we're getting a half page ad and I'm exploring some additional costs with radio and uh, newspapers out in, um, in Haldeman, Norfolk as well. So, you know, with growth comes expenses. And as you said, and you know, I was gonna mention that too, my goodness, and I forgot, that's usually how I begin most of my presentations these days, that COVID has really done a number on individuals' mental health. And now more than ever, um, what we do is very needed in the community and um, we're quite willing to, you know, provide this type of service and activities and events during Mental Health Week um, to people who need it. Thank you for those specifics and thanks for everything that you're doing. You're welcome. Thank you. Well, Councillor Pierce, you're next, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Through you, mine's more of a comment. So if anybody else has any questions, I'll let them go. But if not, uh, just let me know. Are there any other questions? Uh, Councillor Ferrier. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Through you to Lo and Christine. Thanks for coming in. Uh, wonderful to see you both, uh, having worked with you in the past. Um, I just I was wondering if you might be able to um, maybe discuss a little bit. Um, I think Councillor Howes was hinting at this, but but maybe doesn't want to ask again. But um, when he says in our community, I think he he might mean the county of Brant specifically. Yeah. What are some of the the sort of value for dollar that would go directly to the County of Brant, like which County of Brant agencies or satellite offices are you do, planning on doing lunch and learns, which yeah. County of Brant high schools, mm -hmm. um, just to give some ideas and, and County of Brant media that you're looking to, to advertise in and things like that, just to give us a little bit of, of the, yes. you know, the, the, the money, the taxpayer money is coming from County of Brant residents. So what's the value for value there? For sure. I, I think for that's sure. what he's asking. And I know it's a valuable thing having emceed a bunch of them and been a part of the committee in the past. Yeah. It's wonderful what you're doing, but yeah, if you could just speak more to the county piece. That'd be Absolutely. That's a great question, right? You kind of want to know where your money will be going. Mm -hmm. And I understand that. So when we do offer these lunch and learns, right, um, they're going to have specific topics. And then anybody really um, who would like to participate in them can. They're going to be promoted, um, you know, through through media, through, uh, you know, Facebook, um, our Facebook page, our websites, et cetera, Instagram, Twitter, so these types of events are going to be promoted and they will be open to anyone that wants to attend. Um, if there are any specific requests, and we have had them, we had them from the police, we had seniors, uh, a senior's home last year that wanted something. If we have any specific requests and we do get them, then we will be targeting uh, those upon request because that's usually what we do, right? We open it up to everyone. And if there is anyone specifically that wants us to come in or wants us to do something, which happens a lot, right, Christine? It's mental health week and all the requests are coming in. Um, we will absolutely do what for Brant County um, agencies, organizations, schools that we would do in, in other parts of the region. Okay. So and the other, the other um, thing is, as yeah. I remember, one of the um, the people that sit on the committee, she had um, shared in regards to the radio station in Brant Haldeman, Norfolk Catholic, or Brant Haldeman, mm -hmm. and thought that that would be a really good investment in, in order to uh, put some of the money there, because we have used the radio station in Brantford before as well, but nice yeah. to, uh, to use the money yeah. there as well. Yeah. So, so a follow-up if I can, Mr. Mayor? Yep. 
So if the County of Brant staff or the Ontario Federation of Agriculture or uh, one of the you know, Paris District High, for example, requested a specific yep. lunch and learn type thing, they, they could mm -hmm. um, participate in this in this week in a, in a more fulsome way than maybe they have in the past. And we can absolutely we the county can advertise that to County of yep. Brant. Yes. Of, OK, thank you. Absolutely. Thank you so Absolutely. And one more thing, tomorrow I'm getting trained in um, agricultural mental health, farmers mental health, it's called In the Know, um, because obviously we're surrounded by um, agricultural workers. And so that's going to be another type of um, in service that I can I can deliver as well during mental health week that encompasses Brant County and um, other rural areas, not Brant County is in all rural, but some part of it is. So there you go. One, wonderful and needed. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Um, I have a comment. Uh, I, I, there, as you said, there's there's no better time to support mental mm -hmm. health is now. I, I did an interview last week, two of them actually, uh, stating that mental health was my biggest. Um, it, it's the biggest fallout from COVID as, as far as I'm concerned. These yes. kids, and it doesn't know county lines. I mean, the nice thing about Zoom is you don't know whether the, the kid that needs the help is in Tilsonburg or in Cambridge, or in Kingston. Yeah. The money is to service the programming. And although we do like to know that our money is going to stay in the county, you yep. know what? It, th this is an exceptional year. And I think it it is exactly why emergency funding has been put in place for extraordinary mm -hmm. times, um, for extraordinary things. And mental health is my biggest concern right now as the mayor, uh, just because I see people all day long. I talk to people all day long. And they are very, very, they're, it's a good time for people to be patient mm -hmm. with other people's behavior and other people's language because everyone is very, um, the COVID's been with us a long time. And yep. it, it's done its damage. And I think that this is an exceptional year. And I, I think it's wonderful what you guys are doing. And I think it's great that I that we can help just somebody who needs help. I I, I don't care really that they they come from Paris or or Glen Morris or St. George I, I or Burford. I I just hope that the people that need the help are going to get the help from your programming. And if we can be a part of that, yeah, then we then we can be a part of that. Sure. Uh, are there any other questions, Councillor Pierce? Please. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Through you, as I said, it, it, it's more a comment. Uh, first of all, yeah, to uh, to Lil and Christine, thank you very much for what you do. And it is, as was stated here a few times, it's more important now than I think it ever has been. It's it's in the news everywhere, and and everyone seems to know somebody who is uh, uh, suffering from some mental illness, and a lot of it may be, may in fact be due to COVID. Um, I would just like to, just for council awareness, it, it's kind of uh, uh, the, the timing of this is is uh, pretty uh, incredible here because at the last police services board, um, the report that came through from the inspector, it really highlights uh, exactly the issues that we're having with mental health right now and with the, the calls for services for mental health. Uh, the inspector stated that we've actually had a 183% spike in our level one mental health calls um, yeah. uh, in 2021 versus 2020, and and a 73% spike in in all levels of mental health incidents, um, as it states, you know, like all mental health incidents include calls where uh, mental health wasn't the primary reason for police going out, um, but it just shows that that this is everywhere and it is increasing um, exponentially, um, in recent times so far in 2021, there's been 17 level one calls and we're only a month and a half in. So it just kind of, it, yeah. it, it, it shows that it, that is, it is prevalent in our community for sure. And, and also it's not directly related, but there are, um, potential links into the fact of uh, the domestic incidents that we've had in, in so far in 2021. They're also, you know, as, as I said in the report, they're up 67%. Yep. And, and some of those are in fact related to uh, mental health issues, which they find out uh, uh, afterwards. <laughs> And, and we, we discussed it around the police services board and, and as the mayor alluded to as well, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't matter where it is. There's a lot of mental health services doing things, uh, especially in these times online and that sort of thing. 
uh, and it's it it may be may in fact be accessible to more people because it is online and yeah. and it doesn't really matter as the mayor says you know where it's hosted out of or, or who it's helping just the fact that it's 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 there and it's available to people for help I think is is the main thing so uh, again uh, thank you very much for what you're doing and um, at the at the opportune time Mr. Mayor I'd be more than willing to to put a motion forward that uh, that we do. Uh, put this this money towards this, so we'll we'll see where that goes, and I'd be more than willing to do that. Are there any questions before I ask Councillor Pierce to bring forward a motion? Seeing not, Councillor Pierce. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would uh, put a motion forward that uh, that we do in fact uh, grant the emergency grant to uh, uh, to the Mental Health Association of Brant Haldeman Norfolk of the five thousand dollars they're requesting. Seeking a seconder, Councillor Laferriere. Any other discussion? Seeing none, I'll call the vote. All those in favor? Opposed? Carrie, thank you, Council, for I think making a very good thank decision. You. Thank you, ladies, for all you do. Thank, thank you, you very, very much. much. We appreciate this. Thank you. Right. We okay. appreciate it too. Thank you. Good, good night, all. Good night. Good, night. Good, night. good decision, guys. Uh, 4.5. Now time to listen to Jay Hitch on. Heather, do you want to let Jay out of his little holding cage there? There we go. Mr. Hitch on. Yes, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Speak to um, it. Um, I would like to do that. I'm here to speak to uh, item uh, 10.2 on your agenda. It's a request from the owners of 449 and 453 Mount Pleasant Road to ask the, the county and uh, we will be asking the city to exercise uh, their right uh, under uh, section 6.01 of the boundary adjustment agreement to adjust the uh, uh, area of the trigger area. Uh, the request is really is to re to you is really to refer the matter uh, to staff to report back to the appropriate committee. Uh, we have made the same request from the city uh, at the suggestion of a city councilor uh, that was made to our client, but we have not heard back from the city as of yet. You're much more prompt. The subject property is now located in the city of Brantford at the southwest corner of Conklin road and uh, Mount Pleasant Road. It consists of 6.4 hectares. It has frontage along Conklin Road, uh, about 100 meters and about 400 meters along Mount Pleasant Road. I believe the clerk will uh, post up uh, pages uh, 13 and 14 or one at a time as she chooses uh, from the IBI report. So when we made this request, we, we sent along authorization of the owners because we act for a purchaser. Um, we uh, sent along an IBI very full justification report um, that was submitted to the city. So just to identify the property we're talking about is the one that is uh, uh, dash outlined, uh, as you can see, in about the middle of the screen. And, and that uh, to the east is Conklin Road. There's development all around this property proposed in the city of Brantford. Um, and yet this little notch here was uh, left out um, of the settlement area and, and it is uh, in the triggers lands. Uh, we had asked that they be included in the settlement area. Uh, that was not approved. Um, we have submitted that it makes common sense to do this because uh, of, it, of its location for the uh, use of the infrastructure that's going to be along Conklin Road because surrounding it is residential development. Um, so we, uh, the request is to move uh, out of the trigger area. Quite frankly, the city will be the driver on this bus. Um, and, but we would need the agreement of the county if we are able to uh, persuade the city uh, to agree to uh, 
uh, increase the, uh, or sorry, decrease the trigger lands and bring it into the settlement boundary. So, so not as to burden your staff uh, with extra work, uh, we would simply ask that the, the, the request be referred uh, to staff, but no action be taken until the city of Brantford uh, agrees to adjust the trigger area. So they're the, they're the one that will trigger any work on uh, on on behalf of um, of the county. If you are willing to consider it, we just didn't want to ask the city without notifying the county as well. So I don't think I'm asking for any uh, extra staff work or time, um, but that it it be referred and, and held in advance until the city of Brantford uh, makes its decision on our request. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm here to answer any questions. Thank you. Are there any questions to Mr. Hitchon, the presenter? I I can't. Yeah, there we go. Are there any questions? Is is Councillor Gatward? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So through you to uh, Mr. Hitchon, this would allow the Conklin Farm to be serviced efficiently when Conklin Road servicing is installed. Is that correct? Uh, it would be, that's correct. What we would want to do is eventually to bring this into quite frankly, residential development along Conklin Road because it's already, as they say, surrounded by that and to make an efficient use of the infrastructure that will be in Conklin Road, um, we are submitting that it, it should be residential. Otherwise you're single loading uh, what is going to be a major artery at some, at some point in time. And, and the um, corner property that's before the Conklin farm, are they in agreement? Um, because the servicing would have to uh, either be through their property or along Mount Pleasant Road. And the other question I had was the beef cattle farm across the road. There was a comment in here about MDS. Um, how close would the proposed um, area you're talking about be to the um, the new beef cattle operation. I'm sorry, I don't have that number uh, number at hand, but um, we were thinking if it was in the settlement boundary, um, it, it would um, uh, obviate the concern about uh, MDS. Is that good, Councilor? Yeah, that's fine. Are there any other questions? Um, Mr. Hitchon, is that is that Michael Swanson's property? Is it is that the little horse farm there? Yeah, yes, it is. The, one of them. Yeah, the the he, little so one. He's that... he's further south towards the village. Yes. Okay. So he's the, he's the second property. Right. Okay. Are there any other questions? Seeing none. Um, what do you want to do with this? Who has this? Councillor Gatward. Um, no, I don't have it, Mr. Mayor. You don't have I think it. Councillor Chambers. Councillor uh, Chambers? Yes, Mr. Mayor, uh, uh, dealing with uh, the, the correspondence and the delegation at the same time, if you might. Okay. Uh, it moved by myself and seconded by Councillor McAlpine uh, that the report for 449, 453 Mount Pleasant Road be uh, to be added to the trigger area for the municipal boundary adjustment be referred to staff for a report. Is everyone clear? Any other questions or concerns before we call the vote? Seeing none, call the vote. All those in favor? Anyone opposed? Carried. Thank you, Mr. Hitchon. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, councillors. So bye. Good night. Good night. Uh, next on the item is number five. Adoption of the minutes of the previous meeting. Councillor Gatward, you have that one. It's, um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. 
it is moved by myself and seconded by Oh, Councilor Pierce. Sorry. Councilor Pierce. Councilor Pierce. Yeah. Um, that the minute from the January 26th council meeting be approved. Any questions? Seeing none, call the vote. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Number six, any business arising from those minutes? No? Seeing none, we'll move on to number seven, please, consent items. Councillor Bell, you have those. Does anyone want anything separated? There's what, one, two. Anyone want anything separated? Uh, Mr. Mayor, I think I only had 7.1, which was withdrawn. So somebody else has 7.2. All right, thank you. That's right, we keep that away. Wheat has it. Yeah, Councillor Wheat. By myself, second by Councillor Leferriere. The consent items 7.2.1 through to 7.2.14 be received. Okay, uh, again, we'll go back. Councillor Miller, you want something pulled or separated? I, uh, 7.22, that would be the Integrity Commissioner's report. 7.2.10, that would be the long point uh, minutes, and then 7.2.11 GRCA minutes. So, perfect. Those three, Mr. Mayor. So, excluding those three, any other questions or concerns? Call the vote to accept everything but those three. All those in favor? Opposed? And carried. And then we're going to go right back to 7.2.2. Councillor Miller? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, well, in that report, um, Ms. Monroe, the Integrity Commissioner, had some suggested changes to our code of conduct. Um, she also talked a little bit about how long we should have an Integrity Commissioner for. And I'm just wondering, um, I'd like to know what other people thought of those requests, but I thought they, those were pretty good. And I don't know if those are something that uh, we should be implementing or not. And um, so I guess that's my question on that. Okay, we're gonna to go to Councilor LaFerrier first and then Councilor Gatward. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Councilor Miller is uh, asking for sort of opinion. Um, I, I, I appreciated the report. Um, I actually agreed with um, pretty much the entirety of the, um, the report. I think the piece about the type of um, conflict of interest, whether it's a disqualifying or non-disqualifying, I think we've been doing a version of that which is to say, you know, I've spoke to the integrity commissioner about this issue and uh, I, I don't have a conflict of interest, but that might be a, a simpler um, mechanism or, or at least a nice one to have um, that, um, that, that can come in handy. Uh, as an example, uh, you know, I belong to uh, OPSU in my day job, uh, the OPSU union, and I, you know, talked to the com commissioner about this when uh, we look at paramedic services and that they're opsu and can I be chair and can I vote on things that are budget related or or co collective agreement related and yes I can but um, it'd still be nice to be able to bring up the almost the perceived conflict but it's not disqualifying or it's not pecuniary and and I like that different ideas of that I also like the piece about the hiring for five years and 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 that seems to make sense to me um, there was another piece in there um, regarding the sort of making mandatory the yearly training um, and, and having it be a different topic. I understand why this year we didn't because of uh, COVID related issues, but I, I do think that makes a lot of sense as well. So um, maybe maybe it would make sense to have uh, staff draw up a, you know, a draft of the code of ethics based on the commissioner's report and then to look at that um, in its own, as its own item in, in the future. But that, that's all I have to say on it. No, that's good. That's good, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Gatward, you're next, please. You have a comment? Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I um, thought that we should refer this to the administration um, committee so that we can have um, further discussions and motions on what we want to take from this report 
and implement. So um, unless you want to have the discussion at council, I, I think we should refer the report to the um, administration committee for further discussion and proposed motions. Thank you. Does that, sound like what, does that sound like what you were looking for, um, Councillor Miller? And then Councillor Pierce is going to speak. <laughs> yeah, something along those lines. I just, like I say, I, I, there's a few things in there I would like. Um, maybe not everything, but I, I think it needs further discussion. So whether whether we go with council of Ferry suggestion to refer it to staff and, and get their input or, or go with uh, Councilor Gatwood's operations one, I'm, I'm open to either. Okay, Councilor Pierce. Um, uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, through you. Yeah, I was just gonna say, I would be open to reviewing the entire thing as a, as a, as a council again. Again, there's a lot of good things in there. Um, and the one Councilor Ferrier kind of alluded to was the, you know, the disqualifying interest as opposed to non-disqualifying interest. Um, to me, that just, that's more transparency, right? And I think that's what we're all looking for here. And I think there's a, a few good tidbits in there that we can pull out of it. So I, I believe that we should, uh, uh, and again, I'm, I'm good either way, but I think this should definitely uh, go farther. And there's definitely some things in there that we can implement. Thank you. Councilor Ferrier, do you want to finish this off? Yeah, um, just one thing I, I noticed in the report that I want to bring up, and, and maybe this is a bit of a public service announcement, but uh, I noticed that uh, that the commissioner only had two uh, items um, that, that she had to, to look at this year, and they were staff or council requested one, council requested one. Um, and, you know, this is maybe a tricky thing to talk about, but there's a lot of loose talk uh, in the community about uh, councillors uh, being corrupt, uh, you know, taking bribes and uh, really horrible, nasty stuff that uh, it, it, pretty severe accusations to make against members of the community. And uh, something I, I always say to folks who say that sort of thing is, if you actually think there's something there, there you have two options. You can call the OPP and you can call the, the integrity commissioner. And uh, in a way, I'm kind of sad to see that nobody's called the integrity commissioner uh, if they feel these things are, are real and legitimate. Uh, they're not, uh, in, in my experience. But uh, again, to talk like that and to speak like that in the community about uh, folks is, is not Correct, but if you've actually had, and, and, there, and she brings up in the report, communities where corruption has existed, and that needs to be addressed through the processes that are there. So I, I guess the public service announcement is, once again, the integrity commissioner is open to members of the public if they actually feel that there's some sort of ethical issue at play, and they should use it if they actually feel that way, and that would be a much better use of time um, than uh, saying the things that some folks say willy-nilly uh, online and in the community. Um, yeah, that, that's all I have to say. Thank you. That was very much an infomercial. That, that's a, so that's nice. okay. You you warned us it was coming, so that's okay. Um, do you want to make a motion, Councillor Miller? You since you opened it up, do you want? Well, um, I, I know Councillor Gatwood tried to get one on the floor, so I don't want to step on anybody's toes. Um, All right, but I, I will make one if Joan wants. But no, let's give it back well, to Councillor Gatwood. Yep. I made a motion, Mr. Mayor, and I was seeking a seconder. Okay, can you repeat that your referred to the, Yes, that the integrity commissioner's report be referred to the um, administration committee for further discussion on items to be implemented. Thank you. Seeking a seconder in Councillor Miller? Yeah, Mr. Mayor, I'll, I'll second it um, with the maybe um, caveat perhaps through the through Councilor Gatward, um, that we could uh, maybe get staff input to kind of finesse some of these um, some of these suggestions from the from the Integrity Commissioner. Okay, Councilor Chambers wants oh, wants to speak first, and then Heather Boyd. Yeah, I was just going to suggest that the the proper resolution would be to ask uh, staff to uh, uh, report on the uh, Integrity Commissioner's uh, uh, submission to the Operations uh, Committee, and then that uh, uh, will land with a report rather than just an open uh, uh, discussion occurring. Uh, that's a friendly amendment or a suggestion, but um, I think it makes more sense than just- We are at- Do you think we can use that as a friendly amendment, Councillor Gatward? Seven, I have another report at- oh, okay, Someone um, needs to turn off their microphone. Thank you. Councillor Gatward, are you okay with a friendly amendment on that? Well, I really think it's up to council to make the decision on what 
we want to implement from the um, integrity commissioner's report and not staff's opinion on what we should implement. Okay. But um, if, the, if staff wants to bring forward a framework from which we can um, make decisions on all the various suggestions within the report, that would be appreciated. Thank you. Um, Heather, what do you want to add to this mix? I was just going to offer to work with the integrity commissioner to come up with something um, that council can consider on at uh, probably the maybe the April administration meeting if that works. Are you okay with that, yeah, Councilor no. Gatward? Yes. And, and Councilor Miller, you're, yes, you're, you're still on, you're still on board, Councilor Miller. I am. Yes, thank you. Okay. Thank you, Heather. Are there any other questions? Call the vote. All those in favor? Opposed? Carry. Thanks, Heather. Uh, Seven point two point ten, Councilor Miller. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Actually, the 7.2.10, 7.2.11, um, they're kind of intertwined the questions I have, but my first question is on 7.2.1, because that was first in our agenda. And it's uh, three, Mr. Mayor, to Councillor Chambers. I hope he could, if he could just uh, re-educate us on the county. It says the county branch weight is 7.14. Now, I know the GRCA goes with a, a modified CVA when they're a lot... Um, apportioning the weight to each municipality. And I'm just wondering, how does uh, Long Point do it? With, how do they get to that 7.14? Councilor Chambers? By a weighted uh, assessment. I I'm not sure what you're asking, actually. Councilor Miller? Well, it's just when they um, break down the municipal budget, they give us 7.14% of it. And I'm just wondering how they get to that. And, you think it's it's weighted assessment? I knew at one time. I just I don't recall. Yes, it's uh, through the assessment. It is uh, the uh, okay. It's a calculation. It's uh, uh, calculates the assessment of all the partners, and then as a percentage of the total. Yeah. Okay. So weighted assessment. Okay. Thank you, um, Mr. Mayor. If it's okay with you, can I just go into seven point two point one one because they're all yeah, sure, kind sure of you can. intertwined. On page 185 of our package, it tells, says that the GRCA total budget is 31.5 million. And then it says that it shows other grants, um, for most, well, other government grants, my, my mistake, other government grants. I'm going to guess that they're mostly provincial. I don't know too much federal money that flows into the conservation authorities. But in 2020, for the GRCA, they kicked in just over 4 million. And then I see that for 2021, um, the other government grants are gonna be 3.1 million, which is a drop in one year of 22.8%. And I just, um, maybe to the members on that committee, is that is that gonna be a permanent drop? Well, is that is that the intention? And um, if that's the case, this is kind of a double-edged question. How are they going to deal with that other than taking money from reserves? And then a follow-up question to the long point, are they seeing that same drop from other government grants of 22.8%? I just, I was a little alarmed at, at the big drop in that. I'm just wondering who's picking up that tab. So I'll, I'll I guess we'll start with the GRCA people first. How's the chambers? <laughs> Do you want to start with long point first? <laughs> I, I can shed some light on that if, if you want, Councillor Miller, with regard to the uh, uh, monies coming from the province. Uh, uh, the conservation authorities get an allotment uh, that actually has been consistently the same for a long time, uh, for years, as a matter of fact. Uh, uh, the variance uh, results from uh, projects, uh, for example, WECI funding uh, for uh, uh, water, I think it's water control structures, dams. Uh, if, if we do work on dams, for example, uh, either studies or engineering studies or actual construction, uh, we can apply for additional funds from the province uh, through the what they call WECI funding. So you're, uh, when you see on the, on the budget, uh, the grants from the province, 
you have to know what uh, the specific grants are. And I suspect GRCA uh, is the same, uh, would be the same situation. Uh, actually, GRCA has a lot of uh, a dam uh, uh, issues, uh, D-A-M-N, not uh, the D-A-M issues, uh, what I'm referring to. Uh, so depending on what the authorities do in any one year, they can have WECI funding uh, approved or not approved, and it uh, varies the amount we get from the province. But what I'll call the, uh, uh, the traditional uh, funding from the province for the operation of uh, conservation authorities, that is consistent over the years and will be uh, 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 consistent, hopefully, in the years to come. Yeah, actually, that's the. I appreciate that damn answer, Councillor uh, Chambers, because uh, yeah, it looked. Uh, it was a like I say, it looked a little bit alarming to see that a big drop in one year, but it, that makes sense. So, uh, thank you, Mr. Rand. Thank you, thank, thank you, Councillor. Okay, is there any other any other comments or concerns about uh, seven, two, ten, or eleven? See, then call the vote to receive. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. That completes those. Go to the uh, committee reports, please, the paramedic services. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Pierce that the paramedic services committee um, uh, minutes of February 1st, 2021 be received as information. Thank you. Are there any questions to the, the report? Seeing none, all those in favor to receive the report? Opposed? That's carried. Thank you. Uh, planning and development committee report, Councillor Miller. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. And it's moved by myself, and uh, I don't have the notes, Heather, in front of me, but uh, I think it was Councillor Coleman, Coleman, Coleman that seconded it. Yeah. yeah so, um, and I will present the uh, recommendations as uh, written. Are there any questions or concerns about the planning and development committee report? Seeing, seeing none. All those in favor to receive the report. Thank you. 6.3 administration and operations. Councillor Pierce. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Through you, moved by myself and seconded by Councillor Gatward that the administration and operation committee report for February the 16th, 2021 be approved as written. Are there any questions to the report? Seeing that. Oh, Councillor Councillor Gatward. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. My question is with respect to the minutes on page three. Um, the hydro easement for Broadview Park, and um, when we had that discussion, it was stated that the park is used by residents, children pets, et cetera. And um, I believe Councillor Bell made a comment similar to that as well. And um, it's not noted in the minutes that the residents in that subdivision use that area as a park. And I think um, in consideration of what <clears throat> Hydro One wants to do, it would be very important to note that in the minutes for the public to see. All right. I do remember that discussion, Councillor Gatward. It uh, should be added. Thank you. Are there any other? Thank you. Are there any other concerns about the report? Seeing none, all those in favor to receive the report? Opposed? And that's carried. Thank you. Staff report, council structure and construction. Who has this report? Me, Mr. Mayor. Who's me? Uh, sorry, it's... Oh, there you are. Councilor House, please. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Through you, uh, moved by myself and seconded by Councilor Chambers that the staff report RPT-21-48 regarding council structure consultations update be approved as presented. Is there any discussion on this? 
No? Councilor Wheat? Well, the only discussion I have, I was disappointed, per personally disappointed. I thought we could have downsized council. This was a good time to change, but we didn't. So that's fine. Thank you, Councilor Wheat. Any other comments? Councilor Bell first, please. Yeah, thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Uh, a comment on page, page 288 of our, our papers, the table there with the numbers of uh, electors in the five wards. It was a surprise to me that um, there was a significant increase in the number of electors in uh, Ward 1 and Ward 4. It was pretty obvious there were going to be more electors in Ward 2 and 3. You can see the building, but I, I was wondering where all of the new electors in Ward 1 and Ward 4 came from. Heather, do you want to speak to that? Um, I, I couldn't tell you exactly where those, um, that's just the numbers that came out of MPAC as to the okay. updates. I imagine there's been some work in one and four, but I can't tell you exactly where. Okay. Councillor Bell, uh, you want us to- if, if Heather can give me the confirmation of the numbers, that'd be great. That'd be great. Councillor Chambers, please. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I just wanted to uh, uh, make comment uh, through you to Heather. Uh, uh, for the uh, work that uh, she did on this. I, I've uh, been on committees uh, twice now where we've looked at council structure and it's not an easy process and it can be uh, uh, daunting to, to say the least. So I just wanted to uh, pass my uh, thanks on to Heather for uh, taking this on. Uh, unfortunately with COVID, we, we couldn't get uh, what I would have, like to have seen with regard to public consultation, but I understand the uh, 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 the work and, and the, the uh, frustrations and the efforts that, that go into something like this. And uh, the, the, she needs to be commended for the, the work that she did to uh, bring forward the report in such a timely and uh, uh, a complete and professional manner. Yep, I think that's great. Council Councilor Ferrier. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, uh, through you. I, I completely agree with Councillor Chambers. I was gonna say the same, but I also wanted to add that um, Heather's work is not done because there's gonna be a lot of work to do uh, before the next election around online voting and um, the, the need for that with things like COVID. Um, I, I have a sense we're likely gonna move that way as many other municipalities have, not exclusively online voting, but you know, I can understand Councillor Wheat's um, comment about you know the frustration there of wanting to see some changes, but I think with that change coming soon and likely and needed because of the issues we're seeing in the world. Um, I think that'd be a lot of change to add a lot of new uh, board boundaries, uh, size of council, et cetera, while adding a new voting method that I think a lot of people will uptake. And I know we haven't decided on online voting, but I, I have a sense just looking at it from a realistic point of view that that's gonna be a big undertaking in this coming election. So I uh, just wanted to mention that too for those for those watching really. Thank you. Any other comments? Uh, Councilor Miller? Just uh, I'll comment on some of the Councilor's comments, if you don't mind, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'll like right. Councilor Chambers. Uh, congratulations to Heather. I thought she did a great job um, and it was a good conversation. I know I talked her ear off, um, so I can imagine it's pretty tough getting 11 of us all agree on one thing. It's never that easy. Um, however, at the end of the day, I surprisingly enough, I do agree with Councilor Weed. I think, I think we could have shrunk it, but there's enough of us around this table that don't consider that. And to Councillor Bell's point, um, the numbers, you know, you see increase in say wards one, the wards four. Um, I, I didn't find those numbers surprising at all. I mean, go back and look at some of the planning uh, applications we've approved or the committee of adjustment applications. There's a lot of growth, not just in parish. You got to understand there's, you know, a house here, a house there, a small subdivision there. So even though I know everybody thinks, oh, it's just parish growing, parish growing. There's there's so much pressure throughout the county that I think I think all the wards are growing. So I'll leave it at that. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Miller. Any other comments, Councillor Bell? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I, I agree with the uh, the conclusion of the report. I think it it, it does bear uh, another four years to see how the the growth across the county uh, changes. But I don't think that should uh, stop us from taking some of the steps that were in the councillor's 
suggestions that were actually not structurally related. Uh, for example, the, the idea of, of looking at uh, how many councillors represent the county on the various committees that we, rep we are represented on. Because as an example, I, I, how do we ever come to the conclusion we needed four councillors on the social services committee? It, it seemed like an arbitrary number. It must have some history. I don't know what it is. But if every uh, committee had one less councillor on, that would free up an awful lot of time. The other, the other suggestion I, I feel fairly strongly about is looking at how we can further delegate uh, the responsibility for taking some decisions to our staff. I've, I've got every confidence in our staff, and particularly on some of the smaller planning issues that, that we have talked about. We need to, to really push that as far as we can. Uh, bearing in mind, we've got to try and maintain that this is a job essentially as a part-time job for the majority of people. I was interested that some people, and I'm on the, the, the two to three day end of, of a week is my commitment to this uh, job. Somebody, I don't know who it is, but congratulations to them, 35 hours a week, that's a full-time job. And, and just at, the very moment, at this very moment, the, the uh, city of Brantford is looking at should they actually move to full-time councillor positions. I think that isn't a place we want to go to yet in the county. If we went to fewer councillors, that would become a consideration. If the person that's doing 35 hours a week now uh, with 10 councillors is part of a councillor only had six or eight, for example, that's a very full-time job. And I think that's a, a, a really important and crucial element in our thinking. But well done, Heather, appreciate it. Any other comments? I'd like to also thank Heather too. I sat in on all the interviews, except for Councillor Miller's. He seemed to want to be secretive. Uh, actually, it was just a timing issue. I couldn't be there. He couldn't be there. Something happened. But I was I was surprised how how like each other we are in so many ways. It's uh, it was it was a quite a quite an eye opening experience. So thank you, Heather. And uh, as Mark said, you, you do have some work ahead of you, I think with the next election. Uh, so good luck on that. <laughs> anyway, um, anything else? Seeing none, all those in favor to receive staff report. Thank you. Anyone opposed? Golden, thank you. Uh, nine, uh, two, the, oh, the enforcement of parking and private property. Councilor McAlpine, you have that. Uh, moved by myself and seconded by Councillor Miller that the County of Brant approve an additional of 30 Balmero Street to schedule 16 of the County of Brant parking bylaw 4-19 to allow for the enforcement of vehicles parking in private parking lots and the contravention of the parking bylaw. Any comments or concerns? Councillor Bell? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, through you to somebody on staff. Uh, it's not that long ago we had the same question about 80 Willow Street, unless I'm mistaken. Uh, could somebody explain the difference between what was requested there and what is requested here? Because we actually turned down 80 Willow Street. Yes, through you, Your Worship, it's Greg Bergeron talking. I, I'm seeing here that I don't think that my camera is working properly. Uh, essentially, there is no, no difference to this application. Um, I had suggested to the applicants that perhaps they should delay their application um, and relay that council had some concerns with the previous application that came forward. Um, they decided to uh, proceed um, anyways. Um, it's still a, a component in our bylaw. Um, so at this point, we really had no um, other choice but to bring the application forward before council. If I, if I may, Mr. Mayor, so Greg, um, through, through, you, through the mayor to you, to you, uh, you, you're actually recommending we approve it, despite us having uh, not approved it for 80 Willow Street. What's the change in logic? Um, well, I believe that we can absorb these, um, um, these calls for service. Um, and, you know, it's still part of the bylaw, as I've mentioned. Um, and, you know, I think that if it's part of the bylaw, I think the expectation is that, you know, residents will have that service. 
Um, but if that's not the will of council moving forward, that's certainly something that we can look at in the future. Uh, my, my take on the previous um, council uh, refusal was they, that, you know, they weren't saying no um, forever, but they were saying no um, at that particular moment. And I, I, I suspect that there was probably um, a lot of different things going on at that point, and COVID may be uh, part of that uh, response as well. Um, but yeah, this, this, we decided to push this one forward. Councillor Howes, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just uh, through you, further to that discussion, I, I seem to recall that when we reviewed the last application, um, that, that as Greg was saying, the part of our discussion was that our bylaw staff had more pressing issues to deal with rather than enforcing uh, parking issues on, on property that's not County of Grant property. Um, and I, I guess my only comment is I'm not, I'm not sure that anything's changed from then. Um, so that's just more of a comment than a question. Thank you. Councilor Gatward. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yes. And um, the fact that we turned down 80 Willow Street, um, I think that all private parking lots within the County of Brant should be treated the same. I know that we had a, an issue in a parking lot in Paris up near the post office and behind by the river at one point. Um, I don't believe the county decided to chip in and enforce, um, do enforcement on that private lot. Um, but I, I have a problem with this only because if we start doing this, are we going to have multiple requests pouring in from all over the county? Um, so I think they have to get a whole handle this um, company that has the parking lot at 30 Balmoral on their own parking issues. And it's similar to the request we had earlier this evening from the condo corporation. They want the county to help with some of their issues. And they could come forward and say, well, we want you now to enforce our parking too, because their roads and streets within a condo um, complex are private roads. And where do we draw the line? So I'm not in favor of the recommendation, even though it would bring revenue probably to the county. But I agree with Councillor Howes. I think bylaw is probably pretty busy right now. And we're just appointing some new bylaw officers tonight, I think later on in the meeting. So All right. those are my All comments. Right. Thank you, Councillor Gatward. Are there any other comments? So we'll be clear on what we're voting voting on. I'll call the vote to support. All those in favor? Opposed? It's defeated. All right. Does everyone still hear me? Something I hear something's different in the sound, but so it sounds all it. the same on this end. Yeah. All right, then I'll continue. And uh, number 10 is the Sean Pratt Grand River cab request for fare increases. Councillor Wheat, you have that? Yes, it's moved by myself and seconded by Councillor Ferrier that the request from Sean Pratt Grand River Cab be referred to staff for a report. Any questions, concerns, Councillor Miller? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I believe we referred it to staff for report um, last month. 
And I guess my question to staff is, have they communicated with Grand River Cab on the fare increases? Staff, who's going to take care of that? Good evening, uh, Your Worship. It's like Jody it. Zudema. Sorry. And uh, Greg is going to join me in, in the direct conversations that he's had with Grand River Cab on this matter. Um, but there was a um, there was a report earlier this evening, it was 7.2.1 from Julie McKeon, uh, the licensing administrator. It was in your package and that was passed uh, by council. It was an information item. And included in that was that earlier uh, correspondence that Mr. Pratt had provided to council last month. This is the report that um, staff had undertaken to bring back to you. So this is the, the item that you've got now before you, item 10.2 is um, a, a new piece of correspondence that we've just received. But Greg can also fill you in on the details with respect to speaking with uh, the folks at Grand River Cab. Thank you very much. All right, Greg, do you have anything else yes, to add? Through you. Yep. Yes, through you, Your Worship. There, there has been some conversations between the uh, licensing administrator and Grand River Cab and Paris Taxi as well. Um, and we are working on a report for March uh, with respect to the fare rates. And I do realize that the uh, the topic of um, where is the bylaw review for um, the transportation bylaw? Where is it at? Um, we are going to be providing an update on that as well. Um, it'll be a blended report for March just to give you some additional information. Uh, the consultations were done about a year ago with the stakeholders and the public. Any other questions or concerns? Councillor Miller? Yes, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to ask the same question I just asked. Have staff communicated with Grand River Cab regarding the fare increases? Jody? I haven't, oh. I haven't communicated directly, but I believe that, sorry through you, uh, Your Worship, I believe that the uh, licensing officer has communicated with them directly. I can verify that information, um, but that, that is my understanding. All right, thank you. Councillor Miller. Mr. Mayor, I, I, I'm aware <laughs> that they discussed the licensing issue. Um, but if you look at it, there, there's two issues. Um, one is the fare increases. The other is the licensing issue. Um, if, if you read the letter, um, I, I, I think there, I, I, I know we, we put it off for two cycles, but I, I you can almost uh, read the desperation there in that letter for a request for a fair increase now. And um, I don't know. It's just, I, I, I think, I mean, if I had my druthers, I, I wouldn't be in the fair increase business at all. I, I would leave it up to the you know private sector to, to, to battle that out. But I'm just, I guess I'm just <clears throat> a little frustrated, I guess, that we're not dealing with it right away. That's all. And, and, and like I say, I, if, if staff's doing a report and, and we felt that they needed two cycles, I'm just, I guess I'm expressing my frustration that uh, one cycle's gone by and, uh, you know, I don't, I, I'm not sure we've made any progress on that. So I'll, I'll leave it at that. Okay, Councillor Ferrier. Through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'm, I'm wondering, uh, Councillor Miller, uh, to make two Councillor Miller, I guess, um, he's expressing resignation about this but, but does he want to make a motion or a suggestion or or so, something of the like i mean uh, well councillor, <laughs> councillor miller that's uh, to mr L uh, to councillor ferrier yeah, i mean i will i i, I will uh, but i'll defer to the discussion um if there if there is any before i raise my hand one more time councillor pierce um thank you mr mayor through you um uh, I've got, uh, I'm going to comment about this and, and I, I guess overall my, my point in this whole thing is um, has COVID played a factor in this for Paris taxi? I'm sure it has, but we also have a number of other businesses within our County and a number of businesses everywhere that have been affected by this. Um, what I don't appreciate in, in the, the letters that we've received on this from Mr. Pratt is the fact that, and it may be just the way that I'm taking them, but I find it, I find it's the, there's been blame pointed towards the county. 
on this. And that's, that's very unfortunate because I don't feel that the, uh, the county has uh, affected his business. I don't feel the county uh, either doing something or not doing something has um, affected his ridership and stuff like that. So again, I, I, as much as I agree with Councillor Miller and the fact that we need to make a decision on this, um, the, the undertone that that, that I'm perceiving from this letter, and it may just be me, my apologies if it is, um, but I, I've noticed that when we do get things from Mr. Pratt directed towards things that he would like the county to do for his business or to help his business, um, it's almost as if um, it, it's directed at us. And, and I don't really feel that uh, this is, uh, the county is at fault for what is happening here. I think, as I say, it's an overall issue that's happening to a lot of businesses. And uh, that's unfortunate, but uh, I think we have to do our due diligence on it first. And, uh, uh, and that's the way I feel about these letters. Thank you. Councillor Bell, you're first, followed by Councillor Gatward, please. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Matt. Um, this is a regulated business. I'm, I, I'm, I'm unfamiliar with it, so I don't know the details, but if you look at the information that's been provided, there has been a significant change in the cost of doing the business. I don't know when the last time was that we amended fares. So perhaps staff could share that with me. If it's been a long time, if it's been more than one year, I think it's not unreasonable to, to put some energy into this and determine what the new rate structure should be. Okay, Councillor Gatward before we talk. Oh, Jody, you have something to say? Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, maybe I could help with some of the background on this. Um, Council had received uh, correspondence from Grand River Cab as it related to the license extension and the direction that staff received was to bring back that report within a, one cycle. We've done that. The other aspect that was requested by Grand River Cab is with respect to the fare increases. That is a larger conversation because it is dealing with a Paris taxi and other vehicle for hire uh, processes that the county is currently engaged in. The county has um, hired a consultant for that purpose. That, pr that work has been ongoing. I, I give you the fact that there has been some hiccups because of COVID. It probably would have been done by now had it not been for COVID. So we have had some slowdowns as a result of that, but that is the other report that's coming back to council. And um, that is to look at a holistic approach with respect to the current taxi bylaw. It's outdated, it needs to be updated. And what uh, staff are trying to do is prepare a vehicle for higher bylaw. So this notion of uh, uh, fair uh, uh, hikes will be addressed in that report. And uh, with the greatest of respect, the approach has to be consistent and harmonious across the service providers throughout the county. And uh, what the staff is trying to do is any approach that's taken for the benefit of Grand River Cab has to be to the benefit of other service providers providing that same service to the community. So that's the approach that we've been taking and we're targeting for next month to bring that to you, but we'd, we'd like to get that piece of work done. And so um, I'm hoping that background that I've just given you might help to expedite this, this discussion for you. Thank you. Thank you, for, thank you very much. Councillor Gatward and then Councillor Leferio. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Well, COVID aside, I think that when the county brought forward e-ride and the um, costs for rides were a fraction of what our taxi companies are charging, that led to a decrease in business for both taxi companies. And I believe that I read in the report earlier that Paris Taxi has also had a decline in business as well as Grand River Cab. Um, certainly, if I lived in the community of Paris and or anywhere in the county and needed a taxi, I would call E-Ride. Why would I pay 20 or 30 dollars when I can get a ride for $3. We're basically squeezing out the small company, in my opinion. And the other company is a much larger firm and perhaps their 
better able to weather this storm of COVID. However, Grand River Cab is a mom and pop um, business in the county. They um, service the town of Paris or have for, can't remember how many years they said they were in business, but I think they requested the extension because they're concerned about how many vehicles they need to license. And it sounds to me that the way the things are going, unfortunately, we could lose them. And I don't wanna see that happen because competition is a good thing. And those are my comments, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Ferrier, then Councillor Wheat, then Councillor Pierce. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, you know, I, I have to speak a little bit to to what Councilor Gatward said. Um, you could also argue that the county can canceling public transit for 20 plus years was a huge benefit to private cab companies that were able to do um, lots of really good business in the intervening years. And we don't talk about that in that case. Uh, and maybe we should if we're going to do the reverse, especially as a member of this council who voted for E-Ride. Uh, and I, I say that about all the members of council um, in that process, that was a public process. On the same topic uh, with that, you know, again, having public transit is something that was a long time coming for our community. And we just saw a report come out from the, uh, from uh, about intercommunity public transit that say 70% of people in the region would use intercommunity public transit. And just last week, we were at a meeting talking about how uh, if we don't have public transit, then we can't connect to intercommunity public transit because we would be this sort of transit desert. So there's that piece. The other piece, and I'm interested to hear what Councillor Miller is thinking around a motion, um, because um, I think some of the ideas that Mr. Pratt sends it, it aren't necessarily bad ideas. But by the same token, Councillor Gatward and Mr. Pratt have talked a lot about another business. And in, in, when it comes to Mr. Pratt, he's he's talking about the the benefits the other cab company has, Paris Taxi. But again, I'd like to hear from Paris Taxi, and I think that's what our solicitor is saying is that any decision we make has to be fair. Because when Councillor Gower talks about competition, we need to have fair competition and fair rules applied to both of the service providers in this regard. So we've talked over and over again at this table about how public transit isn't the same as a taxi company. We've, there's lots of different reasons why you might use one over the other, including hours of operation and um, specificity and you know pooled transit versus non. We've had a lot of businesses that are struggling because of COVID and that's an absolute fact. However, we've also seen a great retention rate of businesses here. You just got an award for it for, for gosh sakes, um, you know, that 1.7%. So I think this is a bigger issue. And I think if we just cherry pick certain lines and certain stats, that's doing a disservice, but we also have to apply the rules fairly to, to the service providers. And we haven't heard the same things from Paris Taxi. We also haven't heard at this table from Paris Taxi. And I think we need to hear from both. Um, and I think that's what staff are doing. And that's why it's taking two cycles is because we have to apply things fairly uh, across the board. My, my question to staff is, um, Mr. Pratt brings up some of the advantages and disadvantages between our bylaw and Brantford bylaw. Will that be addressed in the upcoming report? Will that be something that we can see? And will there be recommendations at the end of it so we can make a decision as opposed to a, a report for information? Okay, uh, Councillor Wheat, you're next, please. Uh, I, oh, I did just, have questions for staff there. Uh, is, is well, let's, okay? let, let's let the other two questions happen first, please. Okay. Councillor Wheat, you're next. It's not a question, it's a comment. I take exception. Uh, I'm offended by the comment a previous councillor made that the county is squeezing out the competition. That is incorrect. Thank you. Councillor Pearson, and Councillor Bell, please. Um, uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. And, and mine is just a, a comment as well. Uh, Councillor Ferrier kind of alluded to some of it. That you're, you're comparing apples to oranges here. A taxi service is a dedicated service for one or two people that are going the same place uh, that are together in the same party. Um, E-Ride is a shared transportation service. Um, there might be the odd time that you might be by yourself in the vehicle, but that's not what the E-Ride is all about. E-Ride is about a shared transportation service where you could be with multiple people that you might have to be three or four stops before you get to your stop. It's not like a taxi service where they, they pick you up at your house and drop you off at your destination. That's the direct route they're taking. 
Um, again, I don't think you can compare the two of them, and that's my comment on it. Thank you, Councillor Bell, and then we'll go to staff. Yeah, thanks, Mr. Mayor. I'm, I'm actually in support of what uh, Councillor Gatwood said, insofar as we have changed the dynamic in by the introduction of e-ride. We said that we would look at how e-ride was performing one year after its introduction. But I think if we're going to be fair, we should also say what's the impact been to other related businesses? And that's not just uh, Grand River Cab, but also Paris Taxis. And I think the study that we're doing now should reflect on the impact of e-ride on that, that uh, sector of business. Thank you, Councillor Bell. Are there any other questions? Staff, oh, Councillor Miller first, then we'll go to staff. Well, if, if, if staff is recording the questions coming, I got, I got one other one, um, but yeah. I do wanna say, um, I don't think this is a public transit versus private taxi uh, discussion uh, debate because there's room for both. They both serve different niches. But I will say um, from my short time on the uh, impaired driving committee, I do know that there is a direct correlation between taxi availability and impaired driving. So I don't, I certainly don't want to lose a taxi company if we can avoid it. Um, that's my comment. Uh, my question to staff, if they're recording is why, why is it four and a half years between fare increases? I mean, every year our budget goes up every year. We see, you know, different departments, uh, you know, asking for more money and, and whatnot. Um, and I'm just wondering why, why isn't this something that just automatically comes up at, you know, one of our meetings in January, February? Why, why does it have to, why does it need to be a requested uh, decision? So that, that's my question to staff at this time. Thank you. All right. Who's going to speak for staff? So I can uh, comment on the questions that I've got. Uh, so coming from Councillor, oh, sorry, through you, uh, Your Worship, to Councillor Laferia, the comparison with respect to other municipalities, that is something that is being taken into account with respect to the report that's coming. Um, what we're trying to do actually is a vehicle for hire uh, approach, which is a little bit different than just a taxi bylaw. Um, and that's because we've got the likes of Uber and Lyft um, and other companies that have now come into the market. And uh, so there are aspects to the existing taxi bylaw that are outdated. And what we're looking to do is um, take the um, experiences of other municipalities, see what's worked and what hasn't worked and include those provisions potentially into the, into the new draft bylaw. So what I hope to do is to present uh, something to you in March um, which is sort of a draft of here's the template of where we're going, uh, get some type of feedback from you uh, to say, yeah, we like what we see or no, we're not really on for something. We can go back and tweak that such that within a couple of months time, we have an updated revised um, vehicle for higher bylaw for you to consider. So that's in uh, relation to Councillor Laferriere's question. The, the question from Councillor Miller with respect to uh, how, how many years it takes between fair uh, hikes, I can't answer that off the top of my head. My uh, understanding is that's embedded in the bylaw itself. Um, that might be something Greg would know more about than myself. And, um, and chances are you probably have to go back to that bylaw provision and amend it in order to have those increases. But um, I don't know the rationale as to why it is it's taken that long. Councillor Laferrier, please. Yeah, just the, the only part that was missed, and, and thank you, Mr. Mayor, and through you to Jody, and thank you for the response. Um, the only part I, I really want to make sure that report will also have input from the other cab company, correct? Correct, absolutely. Yeah, just because I think we need that we need input from both before we can make a, a fair decision that affects both. So thank you. And through you, uh, Your Worship, my understanding is the, is the consultant that the county has hired has is already done that work that he is engaged with the stakeholders, and that information is already in a draft form. We've got the raw data, we just now need to package it in a, in a format for you to be able to digest. So it, sound, it sounds like we do need the second cycle to get the complete information to put this to bed. Um, and that's what's on the floor. We'll see how the vote goes. And then we'll see Councillor Miller. Okay, uh, sorry, Mr. Mayor. Um, I, I do want to ask for you to stop because now I'm understanding that we're going to see it maybe a draft report of the transportation bylaw. Um, 
will we see um, will we see anything regarding the request from Grand River, uh, Grand River Cab next month, next cycle? Who's going to answer that for us? Yeah, Jody. Uh, through you, uh, Your Worship. My understanding is that that report will address those fare increases, as will it with other aspects of the taxi bylaw, which are outdated and require updating. So that's the end. We're going to call it this where we're proposing a vehicle for hire bylaw because we've got to take into account that you do have Uber and Lyft and other um, taxi like services that are that are now in, in, in the game. Councilor Miller, you're OK with that? Uh, th th thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, I guess we'll have to be. You don't you don't seem like you're OK with that. There's a lot in the world I'm not okay with, Mr. Mayor, but some things you, you go, you roll with it. All right, then we'll call the vote. All those in favor? Take it to the second cycle. Anybody opposed? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Resolutions. Oh, we have um, we have a letter of congratulations. Just looking for a motion to, to accept it. Councilor Chambers, do you wanna to speak to it? Yes, uh, since I uh, am the author of the letter, I just uh, moved that it be received. It's just congratulatory uh, remarks to uh, the mayor on his award from uh, the partners in SCORE. We're all proud thank, of you. Thank, thank you very much. So I'll looking, move to, for to a looking for a seconder. Councilor Pierce, all those in favor? Thank you. Thank you for the letter, Council Chambers. Resolutions, there are none. Councilor Gatwood, you had something for new business? Did, did you have Sorry, something? Mayor, for I, I actually, I have something for resolutions. It, it came up uh, last minute. Okay, it's not on the agenda. No, it's not. We were talking about it before you came in. I, I spoke to the clerk about it and she advised me to mention it here. All right, go ahead then, Mark. Uh, just that I'll have a notice of, I'm just making a, a notice of motion. It'll it'll uh, come to uh, folks on council for the next council meeting uh, around an environmental uh, management reserve and um, um, producer pay blue box responsibility. So I'm just working with staff on some final details on that uh, before it gets to, uh, gets to folks in boxes. So just serving a, a brief notice of motion. Thank you, Councilor Perrier. Um, other business, Councilor Gatwood, did you have something? You have to, you have to take yourself off mute, Councilor Gatwood. It's like a, Thank like you, a puppet, Mr. Mayor. Like a puppet show. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I wanted to ask, um, I became aware in the last month, I guess, that we had opened up the Kingsville Hall as an ambulance station. And I'm wondering, is that going to be used as an ambulance station until we can build a new one at the property on Rest Acres where we purchase land for a future ambulance station, the same location as the detachment? Mr. Bradley. Thank you, uh, Your Worship. And can I get a thumbs up? You can hear me, please. I can Thank hear you. you. Um, yeah, to, to Councillor Goward's point, we um, uh, Paramedic Services Committee received a report. Um, it was pre-COVID. I think it was uh, late 2019. And it talked about our facilities review and the challenges we're facing with paramedic services facilities. And it identified a need for a long-term um, permanent uh, paramedic services uh, base facility likely located in the city of Brantford. And uh, we were directed to work with the city of Brantford to, uh, to look at, to see whether they could build us a facility and we could lease it back to them, noting we have a, several, a couple other facilities that we do that same thing. So I've been in discussions with my counterpart at the city of Brantford. They've been productive discussions and uh, we anticipate having something to come back to paramedic services committee on the future of that base uh, in, the, in the near future. Um, it would be, uh, again, likely located in the city of Brantford and hopefully built by the city. 
Uh, in the meantime, we do have a space crunch. So we've been dealing with that space crunch on a couple of ways. We've leased a bit of additional space uh, and we are, we moved some paramedic services into the vacant uh, Canesville fire hall, which uh, has been vacated by the Canesville fire station staff who have moved into their new fire hall just across the road. So um, we'll use that as long as it's available to us. It's, uh, it's, it would otherwise be sitting empty. Uh, we'd be paying to heat it. Um, the fire hall is attached to the community center, and we know that there's a new community center being um, you know, projected to be built in the next few years. So we were, we're, we're, we have that facility for a while, and it was, uh, it was advantageous space for us to use temporarily. So we'll use it as long as we can, as long as it's feasible to that, or until such time as we can move into some more permanent space uh, through a process that's yet to be determined, hopefully uh, in partnership with our with our colleagues at the city. So um, in terms of future ambulance space on Rest Acres Road, I think that's quite a ways off. We did acquire additional land on Rest Acres Road, but our immediate need is for a larger base facility. And again, we do visualize that that, that, that would have to be located in the city, mainly because the bulk of the calls, 80% of the calls uh, for the paramedic service are in the city. So hopefully that address, addresses the question. Thank, thank you, Michael. Councilor Gatward? Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. And as a follow-up, and um, CAO Bradley mentioned as a base, so does that mean that we would um, not be using the current station on Henry Street? Mr. Bradley? Because they're close together. Through through you, I, if I, I'm not exactly sure whether I completely understand the question. Um, our report to Paramedic Services Committee outlined the need for a, a new base. Uh, the Henry Street facility is a leased facility. It's leased from a private owner, and uh, it's certainly reaching end of life. Uh, it's, it's, not, it's not adequate, and that was quite well addressed with our report back in 2019 to Paramedic Services Committee. So uh, our, our anticipation, noting that this still needs some finalization, uh, would be that we would probably be uh, finding a new base location, a, head, a, a, a permanent base location, and winding down the relationship with Henry Street, uh, the leased facility there. That answers my question. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. There is no other new business. Seeing none, I'll ask for a motion to go in camera, please, Councillor Coleman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Move on myself, second by Councilor Gower. Does the County of Brant Council convene in camera to discuss the labor relation, relations, uh, proposed acquisition of land, and a personal matter about an identifiable individual? And since on our addendum was a, a report from the CAO on vaccination clinics and municipal facilities. Thank you, Councilor Coleman. All those in favor? To maximize the use of municipal facilities to deliver COVID-19 vaccinations while seeking opportunities to maintain other community uses of these facilities where feasible and applicable. Thank you, Heather. Well done, Councillor. We seconded by Councillor Miller. And all those, in, all those in favor? Anyone opposed? No one's opposed? Carried unanimously, thank you. Bylaws. I think Councillor Howes has the bylaws. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Moved by myself and seconded by Councillor Miller. The County of Brand bylaws number 16-21 to 26-21 be read a first time. All those in favor for the first reading? Opposed? Thank you. Second reading, please, Councillor Howes. Moved by myself and seconded by Councillor Miller that County of Brand Bylaws 16-21 to 26-21 be read a second time and all preambles and clauses be adopted. Thank you. Are there any questions to any of the bylaws? Councillor Bell? Yeah, thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. I, I think it would be helpful for the um, folks who live on the south end of Paris that were involved a couple of weeks ago in the discussion around the Lausanne uh, zoning bylaw application to understand what bylaw 2121 really means. And perhaps planning staff could just give a quick summary uh, of what, what it actually means. So that it's got nothing to do in my understanding with the application that came forward as a zoning bylaw amendment, 
but for the sake of clarity, it would be useful to share that. Thank you. You want to speak to that? Pam? Oh, Matt? Yep, I can speak to, uh, to that. Um, so through the mayor, uh, maybe I'll just take a second here and just uh, share my screen. Um, so someone just let me know when you can see that, please. Not yet. There we go. Yeah. Okay. So a couple of weeks ago at council, we had um, an information report that was brought to you speaking to blocks 97, 98, and 99. What's before you tonight is a part law control application on block 100 and 101. This is to establish uh, lots on an already registered block. Um, these are mostly built townhouses already. All this application is doing is establishing the lot lines um, so that um, the people waiting to move in can do so. If there's any questions, uh, please let me know. Thank you. Councillor Bell, does that satisfy you? That's uh, very good. Thank you, Matt. Thank you very much. Okay, we will get back to a full screen if we could. Thank you. Uh, any other bylaws that we're not sure of? Seeing none, call the third reading, please, Councillor House. Moved by myself and seconded by Councillor Miller that County of Brant bylaws 16 21 to 26 21 be read a third time, adopted, and executed. All those in favor of the third reading? Opposed? The bylaws are carried. The next meeting is going to be March the 23rd at six o'clock. I'd like to just take this opportunity to thank the staff for doing what they're doing right now. These are trying times, everyone's tired. COVID's been with us a very long time. Uh, it's a really good time to be kind and be patient. Uh, and I'm very serious. People are just on the edge of their seats. Um, there's a lot going on and it's a really good time to understand that people are all going through their own piece of COVID. So. Thank you all for working so hard through this and uh, thank you for your support at council tonight. I think it was a very good council meeting and I hope the rest of them are all like that too. It was a very, it was, we got a lot done tonight and we made a lot of good decisions tonight. So thank you and looking for a motion to adjourn. Mr. Oh, wait a minute, Councillor Pierce. Yeah, I'm just wondering just, just before we adjourn for tonight that uh, we've been getting updates from Councillor Bell as to the, the health hub. And I'm just wondering if, if I, I hate to put him on the spot like this, but I'm just wondering if we could uh, get a quick update from Councillor Bell as to uh, the recent happenings of the Health Hub. I know with folks just coming out of lockdown and that sort of thing, and and if we look at our numbers, uh, our numbers were were quite low uh, nine days ago, and now we're up and around the, the the 51 mark again. I'm just wondering if uh, if Councillor Bell could just give us a, a quick update before we adjourn for the evening. Thank you. I think you're, you're talking about the Health Unit, not the Health Hub, right? Health Unit. Yes. Thank you. He does know a lot about the health. Yes, he does too. We were on that yes, yesterday. He, he knows he knows everything about the healthy part of the county. <laughs> so, Councillor Bell, if you could give us a bit of a, a report on what's going on at the health unit. I can, and, and I'm always going to go back to the source of data that I find most helpful. And I would recommend anybody uh, in, within council and, and listening to this uh, meeting to use bchu.org. Every day there's an update on where we are specifically in the county. Uh, so I'm going to look at today's uh, uh, report. We have a total of 51 active cases. That's gone up a little in the last week, but it's si significantly down from what it was a few weeks ago. Uh, we had seven new cases yesterday. You may recall a couple of days ago we had 20, uh, and I inquired about that. Th that, that was due to a, a couple of families where there was some close contact with one person that had the, uh, the virus and it spread very quickly within that close confine of the family. So it's not a widespread outbreak. Uh, we have nobody hospitalized at the moment. We've had, as you may have recalled or may have heard, we've had one of the uh, variants found within Brant. We don't know yet which lineage it is, but it is one of those three that uh, from either Brazil, South Africa, or the UK. On vaccinations, we've, vac we've uh, done a total of 6,400 
vaccine, uh, uh, vaccines given, and 2,500 people have had both doses, so they're fully vaccinated. In terms of, of positivity on our tests, it's going down again, which is good news. Uh, we have uh, relatively few outbreaks. Since school started again, I think we got four schools that are within the, the, the uh, area of Brant County that have had outbreaks. Quite a number of other schools have had individual um, uh, diagnoses of children with COVID, but that does not result necessarily in an outbreak in the school. Uh, the long-term care facilities are all now free of, from, from outbreaks. So the Stedman Community Hospice uh, was closed off as an outbreak on February the 16th. So things are, are pretty good at the moment, uh, but it is fragile. And, and I think the, there's still the same recommendation coming from our medical officer of health to follow all the good public health uh, guidance. Uh, and, you know, we have to wait for our vaccines, the most of us. Uh, those that are over 80, it's coming soon. But if you look at the uh, chart that Michael shared with us today, uh, it will give some indication of, of the rate in which people are going to be moved through the vaccination uh, system. So those uh, in the uh, 60 to 79 bracket, <clears throat> sometime between, I think it's uh, April and July, and then the rest of the world follows after that. Thank you, Councillor Bell. In the big scheme of things, we're doing very well. Um, I, I think we've, we've treated it properly. We, we haven't got uh, ourselves all tied in a knot. We're, we've all remained very calm and, and business as usual. But I, I, I do, again, caution people to be very kind because people are, are, as I said, wound very tight right now. Anyway, thank you for that. Councillor Pierce, you're okay with that? You're... That's perfect. I appreciate the update. Okay. Looking for a, a motion to adjourn. You can Counselor, do it yourself. Councillor House. Take care. Stay safe. Good night. Good night. Good night.